Hello, it's nice to be with you again. Uh, I'm going to be working my way through the Tuesday morning service and I hope that if you're joining with me that you'll find it useful. Tuesday morning, daily office and I'm on page 58, page 58 of our prayer books. From Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 3, we will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. From Psalm 96, O sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord and bless his holy name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be more feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Majesty and glory are before him. Beauty and power are in his sanctuary. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Continuing on in our Psalms, Psalm 48 is the psalm for the day. Psalm 48, verses 1 to 8. A song, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth, like the heights of Zaphon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labour. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Glory to God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we would love you with our whole heart. Increase in us the gifts of your Spirit and strengthen us all to follow our victorious King, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We're continuing in our readings from the book of James. And uh, today I'll be reading from James chapter 2, and I'll be reading verses 8 through to 11. James chapter 2, verses 8 through to 11. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not commit murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. This is the word of the Lord. Well, a few days ago we considered the fact that grace strips away all the grounds for discrimination among the Christian community. Different roles, different backgrounds, sure, different opportunities. But no grounds for discrimination, the mistreatment of one another. In James chapter 2, verses 8 through to 11, James gives us another plank for the building of right relationship within our community. Here it is straight out commanded. The royal law, says James, love your neighbour as yourself. Now it's found in the Old Testament, it's found on the lips of Jesus, it's found in the writings of Paul and now here too in James's writings. If you do this, says James and Jesus and all those others, you're doing right. And so the appropriate question Am I doing right? Am I loving others 
the way that I, I want to be loved? Am I caring for them the way that I want to be cared for? Actually, our attendance at church will show that out. If we want people to be loved and cared for at church, then we need to be there loving and caring. If we want to be loved and cared for at church, we need to be there loving and caring. Now, I have areas of great struggle. Now, I'm sure you do too. Behaviours to repent of, behaviours to change, love to grow, relationships to build, rather than those ones that I've damaged or hurt. In verses 9 to 11, James gets serious. He says, if you're showing favouritism, you're breaking the law, this particular law. If discrimination is our pattern, then we are working against the will of God, is what James is saying. But he goes further still. If you're mucking it up here, he says, then you're making it, mucking it up everywhere. To break one part of the law is to break it all, for God has made his will clear. Relationship-breaking behaviours are all equally horrific in the eyes of our relationship-making and building God. Be it adultery or murder or whatever, favouritism, discrimination, those trust-breaking relationship shattering behaviours are characteristic of chaos rather than characteristic of order. Markers of destruction rather than markers of creation. Signs of disobedience and mistrust rather than signs of obedience and faith. It's a catastrophic assessment, isn't it? To be a Christian and yet by our behaviours to be numbered alongside those who don't know God? Never let it be, is James's really strong intention here. And our response has to be one of repentance and change. Relationship restoration and building rather than relationship breaking. Now, people break relationships in churches over all kinds of crazy things, over disagreements of passages, over the colour of carpets, over all kinds of weird things. And we show favouritism over all kinds of strange things. This person likes what I like. That person does what I like. This person is, is rich. This person is poor. This person's of the same race or ethnicity or whatever it is as I am, so I like them. And we break down our relationships there. Should never be. We all have room to move, places to change in all of this. And the good news, and I hope you see it just as I do, because you might miss it and be crushed by guilt if you hadn't read James properly. He acknowledges the difficulty of being a human in the world. And even at this point of strong confrontation with sin, sin that's probably common to most of us or all of us in certain circumstances, even at this point of confrontation, we need to remember the character and the work of God. Remember how James has already described our God, the one who gave us birth. Chapter 1, verse 18. The one who never changes his mind perhaps even if we disappoint him. Chapter 1, verse 17. The one who gives wisdom and grace, if we would but ask, the father of good gifts, the giver of the Lord Jesus for our sin. Yes, the confrontation is solid and we need to feel the weight of it. But so is the consolation that we have as Christian people. Through James, God just wants us to get all of our lives joined up. Our profession and our behaviours, our beliefs and our deeds. Love your neighbour as yourself and don't show worldly favouritism.
Well, it seems like a pretty good guide for me. And I know I have work to do there. I think it's appropriate for us to hear again uh, truths about God that help us to, to, to rest even when we're confronted by tough words like that one from James. Our God is good. And so the canticle, Bless the Lord all created things. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord all men on the earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all men of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Why? Because knowing us, he has still worked towards us in grace and love. We're going to join together in the Apostles' Creed. You'll find a version of that on page 47 of your prayer books, page 47. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to uh, spend some time in prayer, so let's do that together now. Back on page 60. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The collect. Lord God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please, both you, uh, please you both in will and deed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the morning collect, Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for our prayers this morning, I'm going to be using some from our church family matters. Uh, you might like to pause the, the video at some point and, and spend some time praying uh, your own prayers too. But let me lead us in these heavenly father we do give you thanks for our families in whatever form they might be no matter what struggles they face and heavenly father for our families we pray for unity and strength and biblically directed relationships and actions within them Heavenly Father, it's so easy for us to head our own directions and, and yet we know that that's not good. So by your Spirit, enable us to live according to your will. We do pray for a continued reduction in the COVID-19 cases in Australia and around the world. We pray this especially at the moment as things are beginning to open up again. We do pray, Lord, that we might not see a second wave as so many are afraid of seeing. 
And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to enable those who are involved in research to work towards a vaccine that would help us in this situation and perhaps in others to come in the future. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the opportunities that you give to each of us to love, support and pray for each other as a church family. And we pray that we might never take those opportunities for granted. Strengthen us to do these things well, Lord. We give you thanks for our diocese and we pray for those who administer it. We give you thanks and pray for our bishop, Rick, and his wife, Janine, and the entire registry staff. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they might honour you in all that they do, that they'd be people of integrity, patience, grace, and people who are interested in the progression of the gospel in our region. Help them as they continue their work in various ways, Lord, to promote the gospel here and overseas. We pray today, Heavenly Father, for those particularly who are persecuted for their faith all around the world. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that their persecutors would see the light within them and turn to Jesus. Help those who are persecuted continue to walk hand in hand with you as their strengthener and comforter, we pray. And Lord, we do pray for our ministry staff here at St. Pete's, right throughout our parish. We pray for wisdom and grace and initiative at the moment. And we do continue to pray, Lord, that you would have your hand over any future appointments for our parish. Particularly, we're thinking about a replacement for Kurt. And into the future, Lord, perhaps a women's ministry worker, a women's minister. And we pray, Lord, that you might make our paths straight with regard to these things in line with your will and we pray these things in jesus precious name amen we're back on page 60 in our prayer books the lord be with you let us together praise the lord thanks be to god may the lord bless us and keep us the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and may he give us peace. Amen. Well, have a great day. And uh, if you're incapacitated or at home, um, I, I'm really praying that things are going well for you. Blessings. <laughs>